Hello there sexy spongy PlayStation gamers and welcome to another pure PlayStation video review and this time it's Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated on PS4. Ever since he first screeched and screamed onto TVs during the late 90s, Spongebob Squarepants has remained a very popular character, soaking up them royalty pennies from movies, merchandise and many many video games. But not all of them great. I have fond memories of the Mario Party inspired light camera pants game and the surprisingly good movie tie-in game, but the one that really stuck with me was 2003's Battle for Bikini Bottom. Despite this nostalgia, I don't think I actually ever got around to completing Battle for Bikini Bottom, likely because I was an easily distracted child at the time. And back then gel pens were a brand new thing, so I was definitely sniffing them when I should have been playing some games. Thankfully, Rehydrated brings the cult classic up to date, successfully capturing what made the original game so good while enhancing it with vibrant new visuals, fancy graphics, new content, and even a new multiplayer mode. At times, the, guy, the game does show its age a little bit with its simplistic level design and slightly outdated mechanics, but its charm, presentation, and addictive collectathon gameplay, they remain as brilliant as ever. For newcomers or those with failing memories, Battle for Bikini Bottom's story begins with Plankton hatching yet another dastardly plan to steal Mr. Krabs' famous Krabby Patty recipe. But when the plan hits the fan, Plankton's robot army takes over Bikini Bottom, wreaking havoc in iconic locations like Jellyfish Fields and Goo Lagoon to the Flying Dutchman's graveyard and even our own poorest pal's subconscious. To access each of these areas requires golden spatulas, 100 of which are scattered throughout the game's world, hidden behind a variety of challenges, boss battles and other collectibles. Each level gives you tasks to complete, whether that be finding Mrs. Puff's stray students in the kelp forest, beating Bubble Buddy's fastest time on the slips of Sand Mountain, or platforming your way through the Mermelay. Yes, it's a bit repetitive, but that's something all games of this kind suffer from, and to be fair, Battle for Bikini Bottom manages to keep the gameplay varied enough, for the most part, due to having three playable characters. Yeah, GTA 5, you weren't the first, you can play as Spongebob himself, who can sneak, bowl bubble balls, and shoot guided bubble missiles, but you can also play as Sandy and Patrick too, which is a nice way to bring a bit of variety to the game. Patrick's mighty strength lets him pick up and throw objects, which comes in handy for hitting switches in hard to reach areas, among other things. Most useful of all though is Sandy, whose root in in squirrel prowess lets her lasso objects and enemies, swing between platforms and helicopter herself over gaps. The game is full of clever puzzles, or at least they're designed to make you think that you're clever when you beat them, and beating them will mean switching back and forth between all three characters, using their combined abilities to solve the puzzles and to keep the adventure flowing. It's not all brain work, mind you, as there are plenty of baddies to smash and plenty of boss battles to break up the gameplay and offer up some of the game's best and funniest moments. The game isn't very difficult at all. If anything, it leans a little more towards easy. That said, some of the platforming sections were solid and reminded me of how my reflexes, they've lost their reg since I was a child. These moments paired with some confusing level design had me going around in circles in search for an escape, and it's here where the game shows its age. Developers have gotten smarter, and they now know how to push us in the right direction without obvious signposts, and you can see it more in modern games. Despite that, it's all part of the nostalgia package. It wouldn't be the same game if it didn't have the same lovable rogue sections that sent you nuts for half an hour, and actually they reminded me of being a kid and asking my dad to get to beat the game for me, and then watching him fail in front of his son. Didn't mess me up at all. Rehydrated's mechanical shortcomings are more than made up for by its complete visual overhaul. High-res textures and a lot of bright colours brings life to the world, doing justice to the original game and staying true to the teleprogram. The crisp visuals paired with the mostly official voice cast really help capture the look and feel of the show, and that's what really makes this the best Spongebob game to date. Yeah, it's a little inconsistent with its animations and its presentation, but it's still a nice looking game. But yeah, it's not quite up to the fine polish that is the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. 
but still it looks good and if my child you know if me as a child could see this today he'd be happy with it it's what the game looked like in my adult mind anyway stiff animations and all beyond the obvious updates to the game rehydrated features content cut from the original as well as a brand new multiplayer horde mode i'll be honest though without a proper side-by-side -side comparison i can't really tell what this cut content is but it feels like a good full and complete package anyway the multiplayer eh, is a little forgettable, but the amount of content on offer from the game as a whole feels just about right and fair. And while there are plenty of bits to search for and collect, the Platinum Trophy isn't a total grind. And that brings us to the end of another review. If you made it all the way through to the end, thank you very much for watching. Now if you could just go to the final step and hit the subby buttie down below, that'd be awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this video review, and I hope you're keeping well. Stay sexy and see you next time. Bye.